<laughs> so we'll be called to order. Uh, Doris, can you call the roll before we move on? Yes, sir. Michael Siegerman? Here. David Jones? Here. Shane Bourgeois? Here. <laughs> Trisha Byram? Here. David Lipscomb? Here. Hunter Patterson? Here. Cliff Tuttle? Here. Thank you. All right. So our first uh, thing we're going to do today is approve the minutes from the January 7th meeting. Does everyone review those? Maybe. Motion to approve. Questions or concerns? Anybody see any changes? All right. We have a motion to approve. We have a second. Second. All in favor? Minutes approved. First, next, we're going to go to the uh, Comanche Trace uh, Phase 16 preliminary plat located near the 1000 block of Comanche Hills. Consideration final action group. Thank you. Consideration final action concerning a preliminary plat of Comanche Trace Phase 16, 9.66 acre tract of land located in the William Watt Survey, number 65, abstract number 364, Kirk County, Texas. Also being called a portion of a 1,131.78 acre tract of land as described in volume 971, page 698 real property records, Kerr County, Texas. This is proposed 31 lot subdivision phase of Comanche Trace. And included in this request is a variance for the overall length of the cul-de-sac. Subdivision code limits a dead end street or a cul-de-sac street to 600 feet unless topography or other um, circumstances exist. We'll come back. Here's a Example of the water plan. We'll come back to that in just a second. I know we had some questions there. For the variance itself, um, the commission is required to have declare the findings of the variance. You see in your backup, you have six different sections from the code. Of those findings, staff identified um, one and two in your backup or A and B on the screen. Um, that there are special circumstances or conditions affecting the land that restrict the interpretation of the provisions of this ordinance that would deprive the applicant of reasonable use. I'll go back to the aerial and I'll point that out. And it is not detrimental to the public, self public health, safety, and welfare or injurious to other properties in the area. As you can see on the aerial, this is between the driving range and three other existing holes on the golf course. So naturally creating a dead end. Mm -hmm. uh, they are just trying to make use of all of that space between those um, existing holes. Uh, and as you can see, the clubhouse is up on the hill just to the north. Uh, so with the development of the existing golf course, yes, it created this little pocket, uh, but within reason, the dead end is acceptable. Um, fire department didn't have any issues with it either. Highlighted on this one, you can see the hydrant locations. Those do meet the fire code requirements for those hydrants. <clears throat> Cul-de-sac does meet the turnaround requirement. The fire code actually doesn't have a maximum length as long as they have a turnaround to be able to get in and out. And few conditions of the of approval recommended for the preliminary plat as it moves forward to the final plat phase. Property shall be annexed into the city limits or other agreements as necessary from city council for the extension of water and wastewater mains and services. Applicants shall coordinate with the City of Kerrville Engineering, Public Works, and Fire for the final utility design and construction. 20-foot public, public utility easement should be sewer easement only if there are no other utilities proposed. I'll go back to the plot on that one in just a second. You see kind of cut and diagonal on the south side of the street. That's utility and drainage easement. If there is only sewer proposed in that easement, staff requested that that be a sewer easement only so that we don't have to coordinate with future utilities as they come in. Right. Um, other than that, staff recommends it with the with the variance and the conditions as proposed. Is there anyone that has any comments or questions or concerns about this? Mm -hmm. David, you got your questions answered? I believe it is, yes. Yes. Okay, good. Did, uh, uh, the fire... Uh, have any, uh, they don't have any concern of distance for, in terms of pressure on no well at this point at this stage we haven't had that full engineering design to show what that pressure would be um, 
generally speaking at this time, we have no issues with pressure in Comanche Trace. Uh, that'll be with engineering and public works and the design engineer to work out through that final con utility design. Okay. They'll have to meet all the necessary requirements and that's correct uh, before they go they can yeah. move into the development if they, phase. If they don't meet the pressure requirements, either have to go through and I think the options in the fire code are sprinkle the homes mm -hmm. or upgrade to meet pressure requirements. So the final plat won't be approved if they don't get adequate pressure. Yeah, actually it's not and the building permit won't get approved. This particular this development right here is actually not as high. It's actually not one of the higher points. It's higher than normal, but right. it's below the clubhouse and should be an issue for them. And we did have some questions about drainage as that goes through. Drainage is also part of those more refined plans after the preliminary plat. Um, Mr. Lipscomb had some questions about drainage. Where is this going? Where is it drained to? Uh, so you can see it. Most of it does come down the cul-de-sac back towards the existing neighborhood. Yeah, it's good. But future phases will take care of that um, retention or detention as required. Some of the drainage I was told was going to be directed towards the golf course itself as well. Yeah. Any other questions? If we don't have any other questions, do I hear? A... I'll make a motion that we approve the preliminary flat with the conditions and variants as proposed. Motion. We have a second. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your hand. Motion passes. We'll move on to 2B, Kerrville Airport Commerce Park replat, generally located at 100 Airport Commerce Park, case number 2021-006. This is a replat of Kerrville Airport Commerce Park, creating lot 1R. Lot 1, consisting of 8.2 acres out of a 5-acre tract of land in the OV Robinson Survey, number 44, abstract 282, and the existing lot 1, uh, which is a 3.2 acres, lot 1, block 1, Kerrville Airport Commerce Park, phase 1. This is for the Kildeer Mountain Manufacturing. They own both of these lots. Um, lot one of the of the commercial commerce airport, excuse me, airport commerce park, and the five acres that is unplatted adjacent. They're replatting it to be one lot. They will acts have primary address and access off of Airport Commerce Drive. Um, but simple replat. There are some additional water line easements or water lines they are currently constructing as. Well, maybe not today, recouping from last week, but um, <laughs> water lines have been designed, or the extensions have been designed. They're going to start construction soon. So there's some new utility easements that will go in place based on that design to loop water around to get better, better water flow around the properties. Staff recommends that one with no conditions. Any questions? I'll make a motion to approve as presented. Motion, we have second. Second. All, second. All in favor? Okay. 2021-006 is approved. We're going to go to 2C, Comanche Trace, Phase 7, Final Plat. Currently located on Pinnacle Club Drive, case number 2020-061. Drew? Thank you. Final Plat for Comanche Trace, Final 7, Phase 7. Subdivision being a 5.002 acre locate, tract of land located in the William Watt Survey, number 65, abstract number 364 of Kerr County, located, generally located on Pinnacle Club Drive. And we looked at this plat a year and a half ago? A year ago. Uh, for construction, it's about a year and a half. A year and a half ago for the preliminary plat. Uh, if you recall, Dog bones similar to phase five, which is right next door, kind of a dog bone shape coming off of Pinnacle Club. Uh, we do have some, um, let's see, get the pointer going here. These three lots on this end have an access easement across to the cul de sac. Um, working with the fire marshal's office on a variance on that just from the distance from the access road. 
to the building itself. Uh, the fire marshal's office is working through that, so no issue with the plat itself. Um, I'm too far. I'm with that. Please answer any questions. Staff recommends the plat. It has passed all the final engineering um, inspections on all the utilities and road construction, so ready to go. So this is a pretty interesting development here. Uh, I've kind of watched them as they've moved forward with this. There's no drainage issues whatsoever. They've got a pretty steep wall right there at the lower end cul-de-sac. Yes, right in there. Yeah. And there's city. You don't. No one foresees any issues there with the drainage coming off that wall coming down. Correct me if I'm wrong. The drainage goes up the cul-de-sac and out to the golf course. Yeah, as far as that wall coming off, of, pretty much just what uh, falls right there on the top this area here right yeah because anything from the hill gets intercepted by the ditch on the uphill side of Temple Club Drive and gets taken off to the north and east yeah, the drainage ditch here on right. the south side of Pinnacle Club mm -hmm. so anything from internal does this one have the drainage easement that runs through the cul-de-sac correct and then and then left. out to the golf course okay so so the, the to reach that last lot down at the bottom left um, I can. Is that the the roads right there, right? But so from the cul-de-sac. Pinnacle Club comes up the hill here at oh. that turn. There's no access there. Yeah, there's no access here. Right. Their access comes from the actual point of the pointer here, at the cul-de-sac, along that lot. Well, I can faintly see on the on the. This that there's a yeah okay. Yeah, there's. there's Is that an on the flat then? <laughs> Is that on the flat at the bottom of the of the of the wall? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So when you say access across, it looks like to me there's an there's I can't. Yeah, there's an easement from the cul-de-sac. Uh, you can right kind of up, right the at the top line. end. Is that it right there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I the faint line that runs across those yeah. properties. But you see those two pale lines. There, yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It looks yeah. like a yeah. mic. Yeah. 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 That's the access okay. easement for all three mm -hmm. of those lots. So this is called a cul-de-sac with a leak? <laughs> <laughs> oh, with an yes, escape hatch? Right. And, and fire has no issue with that at all? Yep. Uh, the, the last lot, obviously not seen a site plan for the house. The last lot most likely exceeds the hose lay requirement from the road mm -hmm. to the property. Uh, but they are working on the details there through the fire department. Um, so no issue from a plotting standpoint. As they go into building permits, they'll need to address that accordingly. Well, whatever issues they have, they'll be able, they'll have to address those issues before they can actually develop. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, and I know Fire Marshal's office has already talked to Mr. Hyde and gotten that at least two weeks ago. Started getting that process rolling. I don't know what that where that sits today, but um, officially for a plat issue, there is not one. For the building permit, they'll get that worked out. That's all we're dealing with is the plat. So is there any questions, any comments, any issues for anyone? Motion to approve this plat. Motion to approve. Can we get a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your hand. Motion passes. We do not have any public hearings scheduled. And just an update for commission and the public if anyone's paying attention our short meeting today um, February 9th the 2018 building codes were effective council passed those at the end of January uh, with local amendments largely not any new amendments uh, carrying over what we had from the 2006 anything that hadn't been addressed through updates we maintained those local amendments but the International Code Council Building codes have been adopted for 2018 that. edition. The new requirement that we do have is we now require permits for any fence over 30 inches or two and a half feet tall. So the building code itself only requires a permit for a fence over seven feet tall, whereas the zoning code has restrictions on location of fences over 30 inches tall. So try to catch those gaps between homeowners calling and asking about a permit but not recognizing there's a zoning issue um, council did approve a fence permit to be required uh, so we can try to
catch some of those right. issues on paper before the fences are built. Um, with Define that, the issue that you can't build a two two foot fence now. In the front yard, from the zoning code, in the front yard in front of the house or in front of commercial uh, any structure, a fence cannot exceed thirty inches. Um, Vision. Yeah. yeah, for visibility up and down the street, adjacent driveways, um, you know, public health and safety. So the building permit wasn't required until the fence was over seven feet tall. So we've had a couple instances where a homeowner did call, am I required to build a fence? It's gonna be three or four feet tall, whatever the case is. No, a permit's not required. They construct the fence and then realize they built it out in front of the house <laughs> and the maximum height was two and a half feet. Um, so we've got a couple of, of cases we're working through with the homeowner on those, but to try to close that gap so that those are caught before the fence is built, costing the homeowner even more money. Um, we are requiring a permit. Permit fee is $80. Um, council did um, waive any violation fees for fencing, building a fence without a permit for one year so that we can continue to educate the public. Um, I'm not going to ask my question. <laughs> <laughs> ask, typically, for, ask for forgiveness. <laughs> typically, any construction without a permit, the permit fee is doubled when the permit is pulled, whether that's a fence or a commercial project or anything, that's the standard fee. Okay, if I, so if I want to build a deer fence uh, around a garden in uh, with a so-and-so's backyard. Mm -hmm. Required a permit. Um, go online to our My Government Online. Submit the permit. Uh, the, 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 I, have, I have people that do that. <laughs> <laughs> right. But for the, for the general public, uh, you would apply for your permit online, show a site plan of the property, location, height, and material description of the fence. Do so I have to estimate the height of the tomato plants? Mm -hmm. So the this is plants for anything that's over 30 inches? Over 30 inches. Under 30 inches? Under 30 does not require a permit. But... Uh, 230, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't help you so. uh, Are we on schedule? Our next meeting is on... Yes, next meeting is March 4th, next Thursday. Okay. Uh, you'll have a packet coming out Friday for you guys to review. Uh, we have five cases and one plat. I guess three zone cases and two conditional use permits. I may have that backwards. Two and three, somewhere in there. We'll get that stuff out to you soon. All righty. Anything else? Anybody have any? I guess we will consider ourselves adjourned at 148. <laughs>